morning and welcome to our live talk program. This is Lloyd Grove here, your host on a Revive Reform Radio, doing our live talk program covering current events on your Thursday morning, Rise and Shine. Current events we're looking at here this morning as we um, look at this topic um, and we're continuing with talking about falling away. And I'm looking at this topic, continued demoralization of society. So this is in that kind of th trend that I always talk about, this topic about falling away. So this is what we're looking at here this morning. So hopefully the blessed night rest and you're ready to take on today, the day that the Lord has given you. And thanks for joining me here. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, again for your word, for your love, and for your continued guidance in our lives. I pray to your Lord that you may bless us and be with us as we and look at these information, look at these developments in our society and take note from the Bible as what's going on, what is going on. May you bless us, we pray by thy spirit for Christ's sake. Amen. So we're looking here at um, what I would call the continued development in our society. It has to do with the overall topic called the falling away. And so this is like an overall theme that you've heard me talk here um, on multiple occasions and today again. I'm going to be talking about this idea here of the falling away. Um, but before I get into my main talk uh, towards the end, just have a few points that I want to share, um, some articles I want to share with you, uh, and four points, and I get into it, um, which kind of all lead to the topic that we're talking about. The first one is just an interest piece that I think is good for you to take a note of um, what's going on. So this Friday evening um, or Friday night, probably they say around midnight to in the morning, um, there'll be a media shower that can be witnessed um, in our our part of the world at night. And this media shower, I think it's called the Leonid, Leonid media shower, something towards that. If you could just put a media shower or shooting stars or something like that in your um, browser, it will pull up the information, what time it is coming over at your time. And it's basically a meter shower that is one of the largest meter showers that happen from year to year. And this meter shower um, is significant because if you remember studying um, in 1833, there was a similar meter shower and it's a meter shower that is connected with this meter shower. Um, and 1833, as you know, is the beginning of the time when William Miller started preaching and um, he started his preaching in the fall of 1833 uh, or sometime around then and it was connected with this meteor shower um, what you normally call is a falling stars um, and you will see the sky lit now they say that this one here that's gonna be happening in Friday night will not be as large as the one that happened back then in 1833 but it will be significant enough where they say, I think it's like 20 stars per minute or something along that line. So, you know, look up the information. You see that here. Just wanted to share that with you as an interest piece um, that is very uh, interesting. If you have never seen um, shooting stars um, and they explain what it is, that is not exactly stars, but it's something about a comet hitting and the, the dust of the comet hitting the our atmosphere and created that type of scenario so anyhow, very important note there that is interesting um to keep note of what's literally current happenings so this is one of our current events so i have um some more current events that i want to share with you what's going on in our society that is newsworthy and is affecting the topic or somewhat touching on the topic i'm talking about here which is the falling away and it is the continued demoralization of our society now um uh, this year is something I'd covered, I think it was last week, I'd cover about the fraternities and how in Florida, Florida State University last week had um, banned all frat fraternity activity activities in um, until there's some changes. So here this article is entitled, Texas State University Suspend Greek Life Activity After Frat Pledge Die. So another young man died um, recently, and so they decided that they need to um, clamp down on this um, activity here. So not a person die, important. So here's the article from NBCNews.com. The suspected alcohol-related death of a fraternity pledge has led Texas State University 
to join a growing list of colleges to suspend all Greek life activities. Officers responded to an off-campus home around 11.30 a.m. Monday and found a sophomore um, from the Phi Kappa Psi Pledge, Matthew Ellis, 20, unresponsive. Authority says he was declared dead approximately an hour later. Ellis of Humble, Texas, had attended a social event Sunday hosted by members of a university fraternity, according to Texas State President Dennis M. Trott. It's unclear if the event was hosted by members of one fraternity or different fraternities. An autopsy on Ellis has been ordered, but preliminary investigations suggest alcohol was a, a factor in the, in the business administration major's debt. As a result of this tragedy, I have suspended activities of all Greek fraternity and sororities chapters at Texas State, Trot um, said in a statement. These chapters are prohibited from holding new members, new members event, chapters meet in social functions and philanthropic activities until a thorough review of Greek affair system is completed. Commander Kelly um, Bummer Bomber, Bomber's batch of the San Marco Police Department said that it's unclear if Hazen played a role in Ellis' death. Um, Phi Kappa Psi Executive Director Mark Goody said in a statement that the organization is heartbroken. Our thoughts and prayers are with the, his family, friends, and entire TSU student body during this difficult time, he said. Texas State University now joins a college like Florida State University, which is where, where we covered last week, Louisiana State University, that has suspended their Greek life program after the death of a new fraternity member. According to the NBC News survey uh, monkey poll, 75% of people said something needs to be done about hazing at fraternities and sororities. At Florida State University, Andrew Coffey, a civil engineer major from Pampona Beach, Florida, who was pledging Phi Kappa Phi, um, died early this month after um, f um, found unresponsive following a party. In September, LSU student Max Gro Groover, who was in the process of being initiated into Phi Delta Theta fraternity, Theta fraternity died at Baton Rouge Hospital with a blood alcohol level of 0.495, more than six times the legal intoxication level in most states. University of Michigan also suspended its Greek life activity after allegation of sexual misconduct, hazing, and drug use. Additional charges has been filed against 17 former Penn State University fraternity members after the alcohol-related death of a 19-year-old Beta Theta Pi Pledge, Timothy Piazza. So this is something that is ongoing, and as you see there, they summarize all what's happening. And if you had read um, what they came up with recently with the situation of the young man that died, Timothy Piazza, from um, over there at Penn State, um, what they found is that the, the, the fraternity members had tried to delete the video um, that showed that they were basically just stuffing him with alcohol. And um, and basically now there's new charges that will be coming against them. They got off from the first charges. They were dis It was dismissed. But recent revelation because although they tried to delete the video, somehow the video it was still on the hard drive or the computer. And the police was able to, um, you know, bring the video back to life. I don't know how to say it, but they were able to retrieve the video even though, I guess, on the front of the, the memory of the, the computer, I don't know how to say it, the, the video was deleted, but it was still there. And they re retract, you know, they, re they, pull, they pull the video and show that the, the, they had given him, I think, 20 or so um, cups of alcohol within an hour and 20-something minutes. And um, basically... That's that's just mind-boggling because as you know when a person is drunk, they have less control over their their self. They have less control over their bodies, and so 
they're less they have less inhibition so they they're not really able to properly stop themselves so i can see manslaughter charges for these young men could be in um what could be coming down the pike so that's another thing that's going on so it's interesting to see that um multiple fraternities are clamping down and so as my topic here is falling away the continued demoralization of the society you wonder is this something that normally had happened over the years where people had died from hazing or is things getting out of control because the young people are less and less moral because you think about it as of 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 as you have noticed and i've noticed is that as people pull away from church morality and become more immoral um they lose control of themselves or they are they try to you know uh, exercise less self-control and as you see this happening you're going to see the results in the society this is why i say that as you see people turning from god turning from religion they're not just staying at home and twiddling their thumbs. They're turning to something more nefarious and dark. And the reality is we are seeing this in our society. We're seeing the continued march of evil, bloodshed, um, debauchery that is happening. And this is a debauchery and, and, and bloodshed can be linked directly to what's happening where people have rejected truth. They have rejected the Bible. And the end results are, obvious and this is the end result i believe that we're seeing this constant departure this constant revelry um this constant partying and stuff like that and the result is often death so that's something that's happening to take note and um to continue watching what's happening there um now another thing that i want to share with you this morning that is um, just showing the cracks of what's happening in the society that things are kind of unraveling but this is something that's been ongoing um, and I'll take this one here first this is about a shooting that happened yesterday I think it was uh, it was a rampage where this man in Northern California went and killed I think four people and wounded um, ten and this is just a little bit more information and what's going on here with this uh, man now as we've, you've noticed that more and more society is drifting towards um, more of this violence but a lot of this violence is connected with mental illness and we see this violence spilling out into bloodshed in our society so this again is taken from NBC News and it's entitled gunman in California shooting spree needed mental health sister says and this is written by Shauna Williams and Phil Hassel. Hassel. It says, The sister of the man accused of killing five people and targeting an elementary school in a shooting spree in Northern California say he had long struggled with mental illness. Kevin Johnson Neal, 44, was killed by police after shooting at officers who ran um, the vehicle in. He was in off the road during shoot during the shooting spree part of which was thwarted by quick lockdown procedure at rancho tehima elementary school authorities says quoting his sister it says his mental condition continued to deteriorate and you know as a family you want to be supportive and you want to love them and you know it just continued to devolve and descend into conspiracy theories and hallucinations and delusions of grandeur um neil's older sister sheridan or said in an interview wednesday from her home in Cary, north carolina so here the sister um here's the sister testimony uh of this gentleman he's 44 so he's a young person to a certain degree he's not an aged person that you say well probably was going through dimension and all the type of stuff he was of, of a decent age and this sister says here that you know you want to be supportive but uh, he continued to devolve he didn't evolve but he devolved and he descended into conspiracy theory uh, theories hallucinations and delusions of grandeur um very significant here because if if you notice with all of the mass murders and mass killings that you've seen um, a high percentage of them are connected 
with something to do with the person's losing their mind. You know, the microwave telling them, go kill people and so forth. And after he had killed his wife, I think the night before, he left and he went on a, on a shooting spree and he, he went to go to a school. So somehow, think about it, he went to a school, he shot in the school, but luckily, as I'm going to read in the article here, the school had heard the bullets. There's, they heard that he, they heard, know that something was happening. And without he approaching the school yet, they shut the school down. And this, you know, made him that he couldn't get access to the school. So important to so notice this idea here, kill his wife, start killing people in the community, and then start heading towards the school. This is significant to me because it's a consistent pattern. Continue reading here from the sister's statement. It became difficult to have conversations with him because you never know what was real and what was fabricated and what was in his mind. Neil is believed to have murdered his wife, concealed her body beneath the floor of their home before embarking on the shooting spree, which left four other adults dead, officials said. He is suspected of ramming a vehicle into the fence outside the elementary school and firing into the building, but wasn't able to get into any classroom because school officials hearing gunshots about a quarter mile away put in place a lockdown procedure, authorities says. One child was shot inside the school. Or said she last saw Neil about seven years ago when he was packing up his truck to leave for California, but talked to him more recently than that. They spoke in January, she said, after Neil was arrested for assault with a deadly weapon in an incident involving a neighbor. Neil complained about having troubled um, having trouble with his neighbor and or said all she could do was give him a gift card to get some clothes to wear in um, to court. Neil's mother told Associated Press that her son told her, Mom, it's all over now, the day before the shooting rampage, and that he said, I have done everything I could do and I am fighting against everyone who lives in this area. Or said that the family had dealt with similar statements for 20 years. So barely reacted to the last one. We got, I can't take it anymore a thousand times. Like when, do you know if it's real, she says. So this, this is what's happening here. Um, if, if you know, um, notice there is a trend going on that you can see, which is to me part of my belief of, of, of one of the things that I can throw in here as I talk about the falling away or the continued moral decline, just in case, um, you, you know, you don't understand what I mean by falling away, the continued moral decline in our society that not only conspiracy theories are bomb, but there's a large segment of our population that believe if the rain fall, it's a conspiracy. If somebody do something like, as I say, probably be, blowing leaf and blow it over into the, their side of the yard. It's a conspiracy. If, you know, the male person probably put your mail in somebody's mailbox, it's a conspiracy. And I've never had any of those experiences, but I'm just pulling random stuff that comes to my mind as an example. Anything that comes to the person's mind is a plan by the government. And you can see that there's thousands of people who mine are so unstable that it is nothing for them to believe the weirdest conspiracy theory. You name it, they believe it. It's nothing for them. And this is significant because if you look at some of the things, every time there's a shooting, it's the government is doing it. It's a plan by the deep state. Everything is a plan by the deep state. Nothing in life happened that is not a plan by some deep state something. If there's a hurricane, a tornado, a tornado, if there's um, an earthquake, if there's a flooding, if there's a, a robbery, if there is a food poisoning, anything that happened in life that's bad, it must be a secret or organization, um, some secret plan, a covert plan to take our guns. And when you get into this type of thinking and you understand, you realize that there's something is really wrong. And there's a large section of the society that really believes 
that if you have a call, it's something that the government plan and nothing. So imagine we have how many thousand years of existence on this world and before recently, before the government in the last 50 years can plan all these things and do these things and control the minds of people. All these events were normal happening. They're bad happening, but they normally happen. But all of a sudden now, we have a generation of young men primarily that believe that if there's a tornado that used to happen, these things happen in the past, it is done by the deep state. If there's an earthquake, it is some, they have some antennas that are doing it. If it's um, anything, a plague, a pestilence, a disease, nothing can be real. You know, if somebody fornicates and pick up some STD, it must be a plan of the government. And it doesn't mean that the government doesn't do things that are corrupt and nefarious and trying to do things. But this to me is 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 feeding yeah, people online that I don't know if they're unstable, but they're there to feed unstable people. Um, they have another crazy group that we have amongst us that many people believe are stable. And their primary purpose is to tell you that everything that happened bad in the life of people is done by the Catholic Church or is done by the Jesuits. And nothing happened by itself. Human beings are not sinners. People don't sin anymore. It's it's some plan of the devil. And um, and this to me is simply um, feeding that mental instability because sin makes us mental unstable. Um, so notice here, like she says, over the years, the brother had just become more, he had deteriorated more and more and he descended into conspiracy theories hallucinations because some of these things um i've heard i've seen videos where somebody talking about like a shooting especially shootings because most of the shootings are done by white male and most of the time the conspiracy theorists are white male and they seem to have a very difficult time very difficult time accepting the fact that it's possible for somebody to go delusional and shoot up the community and so normally they'll come up with the weirdest of stuff to deny the fact that it's a possibility that a person could lose their mind and head for the school and start shooting up a school. And and so it, it seems they take this very difficult. They can't accept this. So they prefer to go and buy the hundreds of thousands and millions. They'll like to watch videos and enjoy videos, it seems, that tell them. And some of them, not all of them, but tell them that it has to be a government plan because it's not possible for somebody to become suicidal. But if that same suicidal person take a vest and go into a building and blow themselves up and then shout at al Akbar, they believe that the person did it. But if another person from another race does it, they can't believe it. They can't come to this acceptance. But it tells me that, again, it points to the constant demoralizing, the reduction of morality, the, the emphasis on things that are not factuals where they come to video games, mu music, movie, people feed themselves um, basically horror movies, things that are not factual, have no basis in, f in facts, then the terrible diet and the drugs. And you combine all of this, and I think it's making people become more susceptible to conspiracy theory, to hallucination, and to delusions of grandeur. And this is what we see in so many people, as I say, you name anything will happen in the news today, and there is a large percentage. You could probably, I could easily say, probably thirty-something percent of our society. No matter what the, the, the article, no matter what the event, no matter what happened, probably thirty percent, thirty-something percent of people believe it's some plan by the government or by the Jesuits or by some nefarious organization. Stuff don't happen anymore. Things that used to happen in the Bible, as I say, plagues, pestilence, earthquake. Jesus says, when the time shall come. There shall be plagues, pestilence, earthquake, wars, rumors of wars. These things always happen. But in our modern time nowadays, uh, probably, I don't know, probably 30 something percent, I'm probably overestimating or underestimating, will believe that if any of those events happen, and uh, these are even people who go to church and believe in the Bible, they'll just say, oh no, it's a conspiracy. It's a plan. It, there's no such thing as pestilence and <laughs> wars and stuff like that. And you say, but wait a minute, for, for the last. 5,000 something years, these things always happen. Now it's the government doing it? And they say, yeah, 
Very sensible people, you would think. So, but what has to understand, I believe this is a combination of like too many movies, too many late night eating, too many crazy hormonal fill meat, too much marijuana and other drugs, and there are less many people mind damage. And you can find, if you read enough, if you study enough, you'll find that this is really what's going on. And it leaves many people to accept the weirdest conspiracy theory because the weed is working in their brain. Too much marijuana. The hallucinations, the delusions of grandeur. You know, because basically that's what drugs do. It make you feel like you can fly. You can be in a 10-store building and jump and land on your feet. And you feel like you're a superhero. And I think that's why, you know, it's great to, I guess it's good to, to take drugs and then watch superhero movies. You really feel like it's possible. But this is what we see. So I'm putting forth here, just in case you don't understand what I'm saying, I'm putting forth here that we will continue to see more of the shooting because we have so much of these young men that are coming up that their mind has been wrecked by too many coffee, too many drugs, too much crazy video games, lifestyle, um, too much solitary and can't deal with other people and so forth. And you will see more because the mind can't grasp facts. And reality, the mind is always in a mode of a book, you know, a, fac a fictional book. And they think life is a fictional book. But the reality here is that the more these killings happen, is the more it's sucking out this crazy talk that they have. Because sooner or later, they either they're going to go into a school and shoot it up or their friends, and they're going to realize, well, I know my friends all my life. He's not a Jesuit. He's not a, from the Mossad. He's not from the CIA. He's my friend. I know him from, he's been a child. We went to kindergarten together. We went to high school together. We are in the same neighborhood. And then your friend goes to a place, you realize, wait a minute, I know this guy. Because the problem is, we have people who can't bear facts in our society. And if they can't bear facts, forget about teaching truth to them. They have no bearing and truth. They need a detox before they can even receive Bible truths. And forget about because remember, we have people in our church who will tell you if there's an earthquake, there's some antennas up in Alaska that is controlling the earthquake. If there's a hurricane, or is the government do it? Notice also in the past, people used to sin. You know, the Bible says, and I'm going to talk about this before we close, that there is such a thing as sin. Uh, now we have people in the church that if somebody commits adultery, if somebody do something evil, some type of sin, it's a plan. It's, 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 a, it's a conspiracy. And nobody sin anymore. Everything is a conspiracy. And it's, it's, it's the devil lord. Some evil group is trying to take down the church. No, people are sinners. It's just people sin. And I, I understand what happened out nowadays. Nothing is, nothing is just sin and bad things don't happen. But that's where we're at, and that's part of our current events. That's, that's it, to me, as you say, you know, this is probably what I just said there is, will you hear me talk more about it? Because it's massive, especially if you go on YouTube. Ain't nothing concrete anymore. Everything is a, is a movie. It's some plot, a nefarious plot by some government. And I think, as I say, watch too many movies. Now, um, the fourth thing here I'm going to talk about real quickly, um, before I go to my main point, which is becoming a minor point, as I go through these things. Now, this is again from NBC News, and you probably saw this um, last night or this morning. And it's entitled, um, Louisiana Man Released from Prison Nearly 46 Years Behind Bar. And his name is Phil McCausland. Or sorry, the person who wrote it is Phil McCausland. And we read, it says, After spending nearly 46 years in a Louisiana prison for a crime he says he didn't, didn't commit, Wilbert Jones got his first taste of freedom on Wednesday. And it tasted a lot like gumbo. All right? I don't know what that tastes like. Um, shortly after his release from prison on Wednesday, Jones 65 shared his plan now that he was a free man. Some gumbo and some good potato salad and some good desert, dessert. Jones said... Um, who was arrested at 19, enjoyed, I enjoy my life, enjoy my little life I have left and speak to young kids and tell them to go the right way and not this way. This ain't where it's at, he added. Jones was convicted of kidnapping and raping a nurse 
who was abducted from outside a Baden Rouge hospital in 1971. So think about that. That's 40 something years ago. And in 1974, he was given a life sentence without the possibility of parole. His case was taken on by the Innocence Project in 2003, and one of their investigators found that a serial rapist had admitted a nearly identical crime only four weeks later. That crime wasn't shared with Jones' attorney. The nurse who, who, who died in 2008 was also the only witness who testified against Jones. She identified him as in a lineup three months after his arrest, but noted that Jones was shorter and had a different voice. Because the information wasn't shared and due to the inconsistency of the nurse's testimony, Judge Richard Anderson said the conviction shouldn't stand and granted Jones a $2,000 bond. He was released on Wednesday and was met by his family who has long fought for his freedom. It wasn't but a matter it wasn't but a matter of time, says his brother Plem Jones. I know that he was going to be free one day. I just didn't know when. Iller Moore, district attorney of East Baton Rouge Parish, said his office would appeal the court's decision to the Supreme Court. We are seeking an appeal, a pallet, as our appellate review, Moore said. We have the utmost respect for the court, but respectfully disagree with the court's legal and factual conclusion. Now, here's a case um, that is in a long series of cases taken up by the Innocence Project. So, these sets of um, lawyers and investigators have been going over cases that have been suggested to them or have have questionable outcome where the person was put in prison for a long time or even given a death penalty. And when you review the case, uh, there was clear evidence that was either hidden from the defense attorney or there were just hidden periods so nobody didn't know about the evidence or things were known but were not brought forward because they wanted to convict, convict, convict. As you know, the gentleman Jones that just got released is a African American descent of African or African descent person. So this was the case back in the day. Because remember if we were at 1971, 1960 something would be the time of the Civil Rights Act. So there were no civil rights for black Americans. It was just basically district attorneys and police making heroes of themselves, locking up all these black people in prison. Some were guilty of crimes and some weren't. Some were just there because you had to fill a prison population. So notice here, whatever is done in darkness comes to light. And whether Jones was the person who did it or not, at the end of the day, here you have a situation where two important details. Number one, the person there was a person that was a serial rapist that actually confessed to a similar crime, but Jones took the fall for this one. Also, the nurse said the voice of the person and the height of the person seemed to be different. Jones' voice sounds different and he seemed shorter. This again was not shared. So there's always this possibility that he did the crime or there was a possibility that he was doing crimes in the area and as he was doing crimes in the area, he was known by the police, he was on the police radar and they just locked him up for this crime. And sometimes that's what's going on. But now, he say a person was doing shoplifting and he would have gotten, say, a few months in prison or jail or whatever it was, whatever it is. But instead, now he get life imprisonment. And so much of these cases, they keep turning over. And the sad reality speaks to the system that we have where this is, again, to me, part of what I call the moral decline in the nation or the revelation that the nation is not all what it is you know, a state it is, you know, all men are created equal. Uh, and almost all these cases have proven one thing, that many of these district attorneys that are what you call our American eras, local eras, basically made their case on a lot of the back of black men. Just think about it. This person here probably was a hero, the person that put him away back in the 70s. He was a local hero. He was tough on crime. He was hard on the criminals. 
and he put them away. Only to find out that case of the case, and quite a few of these district attorneys, these prosecutors, case of the case of coming forward that the police, the prosecutor, the judge, everybody involved in the case suppress information and put the person away. Then they would run for office and the, the community would say, oh, you are our heroes. You are saving us your heart in crime. But while that was going on, there were crimes going on that were not investigated. Nobody was put to prison for. And the, those human beings continue their crime. As I always point forward, I notice that the amount of young kids that go missing every year in America, never to come back alive, never to resurface, uh, and never to say, well, they're run away. But you don't see all the effort being put to investigate those crimes. Because if you investigate those crimes, then you'd have to be really tough and tough and criminals, tough and sick, sadistic people, but they're not investigated. But what happened then? This to me is one of the things that created a moral decline in the nation. Because by not investigating certain crimes, you allow the crime to fester, get worse, and get out of control. And by the time the crime now hit the scanner of the general public, so to speak, the mental scanner, the crime is out of control. And this is what we're seeing. Just think about it. If you spend all your resources doing things that you ought not to do. Normally, if you don't deal with this, then you're going to find that if you're not dealing with a problem, the problem gets out of control. And what we can see and what we have seen over the years is that if you don't deal with, say, the mental health problem, the things that are causing people to do crimes and then the crime become part of the culture because it was never addressed, then the thing will get out of control. Now, um, I'm going to spend the rest of my time here with you, and I'm going to talk about this thing that's been going on in the news that um, I don't have any article to read per se, but it's just this problem that um, came up with this gentleman called Roy Moore. Now, Roy Moore is from Alabama. Hopefully, I'm getting the state right, and he's a judge there that has basically been on the news for a while. Now, this judge here has been on the news primarily because he was the guy that wanted to have the Ten Commandments in his courthouse. He's classified himself as a Christian and that he's a champion for the Ten Commandments. Um, he's a judge that basically talked talk a lot of religiosity, talk about, a lot about religion. And as I say, he's a promoter of the Ten Commandments. He's a promoter of, um, it seems, morality. But... He's a judge, and like I was covering in a few minutes ago, normally I notice about these um, these gentlemen that are like judges and district attorneys and stuff like that. They normally make their fame and their their living livelihood and being tough in crime. But historically, you've not we've seen over and over again that so much of these men that have been tough in crime themselves are immoral, and themselves are people who. They're tough on crime, but tough on crime on people who are weak, people who are not part of the main line. And this has been the case over and over again. Because think about it again, all these judges that would put these people behind bars and they will stock these prisons. Somebody is responsible for stocking the prisons with all these men and claiming that the, the immoral people in our society are primarily the blacks. If you listen to most people who are conservative, they'll tell you that historically, blacks do more crime. Historically, that's what they say. It's, it's uncontrovertible data. And, and if you say, why? They say, well, look at the, the arrest. Look at the prisons. It's a testimony that black, blacks, black Americans do more crime. But if you say, well, what crimes are being investigated? What crimes are being tough on? What crimes have greater penalties, they'll say, well, the crimes that affect black community, and they say, well, where does most of the resources go for investigation is in the black community and, and, and to arrest and convict blacks because they're the criminals, they're the animals in our society. And this is the narrative that you hear. And as I say, I say it here in the flip of, like if you listen to me say this, it's important for you to understand. I say it, with the freedom knowing that says most conservatives that are pundits and so forth freely throw this information out there. But I was always taught this when I was young. 
that if you go looking for trouble, you will definitely find the trouble. If you go looking for trouble, you'll find it. It's a guarantee. If you go poking around and start investigating, you'll find. And it's significant to note that if you go poking around hard enough and investigating, you'll find dirt and, and just about anyone, something in their closet. And so what happened now? Just we're pivoting off the thing about these judges in down south locking up all these black men. And we come over here with Roy Moore. Um, as you know, with what happened, the Washington Post poked around. And as they poked around, they found basically stuff in the closet of Roy Moore. And that things like this judge here, when he was younger in his 30s and he was already district attorney, that means he was responsible for putting up a lot of people back, uh, back in prison. He was responsible for putting people away. And in those areas, historically, the people they were putting away mostly are black men for crimes that they were doing. But he himself was a person that would stalk high schools. He would stalk malls. They had to ban him from a mall. The police had to block him from going to malls because the, the mothers in the community will complain that he was at the mall harassing or trying to get date with young girls. And this is the type of stuff that was going on. They know that he would always hang around high schools as a 30-something-year-old man. And this is the thing. So just imagine, if you are tough in crime and you are saying, well, wait a minute now. As you know that when the FBI do a drag and they arrest people for child pornography, if there's 100 men, 90-something percent of them would be white male. So if you were being fear and crime and you were saying, well, we investigate all criminal activities and we're willing to lock up anyone that do crime because we're going to be fair. Because that's what the Constitution states and everybody that goes into public service swear to the Constitution that they'll uphold and protect the laws of the land and the Constitution. Then you will find that the jails will not be represent overrepresented by African American or people from African 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 American descent. Also, you'll find that all crimes will be investigated and dealt with fairly. And so you would never say that most of the crime done in America is done by the smallest percentage. Because they normally say 13% of the population which is represented by the African American does like six or something percent of the crime. As you remember in 2008, when we had the financial crash, you remember clearly that in the financial crash, nobody went to prison. Nobody went to prison in any, anything really connected. There were probably one or two people that were arrested for stuff that normally people get arrested for through the course of the years, inside trade, inside of trading and stuff like that. But in 2008, 2007 financial crash, all the criminal activities, laws that were breaking, that were federal laws, laws that were set in by Congress, to stop Wall Street from and Wall Street bankers and investors from doing certain criminal activities. All this stuff about bonding loan and stuff like that. Stuff that was against the feds. The feds, these people should have gone to federal prison. You see, nobody got arrested. Because the problem is how many men you had to arrest that were white color crimes, that were white skinned, so to speak, or peach. How many of them you would arrest? But they didn't. What they did, they said, well, I guess we're not going to do that because we'd have to do a dragnet and we're going to have to take thousands of our finest, our best, well-educated criminals and we're going to have to lock them up like we lock up these guys from the hood because they're terrorists. They terrorize our society financially. But this was not done. This was allowed off. But by allowing these people to do such a massive theft, the largest theft, in probably the world and American history, was perpetrated in the 2008. For them to get away with that theft, does that make society better or it makes it worse? I put forward here to you that it makes it worse. Why? Because all those criminals are free to continue their crime sprees, to continue basically destroying the fabric of society with their criminal financial schemes and plans. And they're here. They're not locked up. And yet, you can go to a conservative and say, um, who does mo do most of the crime? And they'll say, black people. <laughs> I have no shame in the face. But if you say, wait a minute, let's talk about 
all the criminal behavior that is going on amongst white. They say, oh, you're, you're being racist. You're, you're trying to stoke division. But how is it putting the fire to division for them to just come out of the face knowing that there's a big pedophilia problem in the white society and because every group based upon culture have certain crimes that they're more emphasized on and if you only target certain crimes you can dragnet certain groups of people how then you just go and say out your face and make it seems like the sinners in our society are the black people but when you do this what it is the crime fester because when you put an emphasis on one thing it's just like even exercise if I'd only exercise the left side of my body, it's going to be to the detriment of my right side. Because that's not how you exercise. You exercise both sides. So that if you can lift, you know, 50 pounds in your right hand, you're supposed to be able to lift 50 pounds in your left hand. That's how you exercise. But if you only lift 25 pounds in your right hand, uh, 50 pounds in your left hand, you're going to be lopsided. I remember there's always a story that um, I, I remember hearing the story from a famous evangelist called C.D. Brooks. And I think it's him. He tells a story about how, like, if they have two dog, dogs to fight, it, basically the dog that is fed and the dog that is starved will basically determine the outcome. So if you have two dogs that are going to fight, days before the fight, you starve one dog and then you feed another dog. The dog that is fed is going to be stronger. So that dog's going to win. And he was talking about that because he was giving the analogy about sin. That if he spent a lot of time consuming materials and feeding the sinful nature, that obviously when you're tempted, you're more going to sin. Because you're being fed that material. You, you have a weakness because you're fed the weakness. You're basically weaken the moral side of your life. And it's the same with society. If you take people and corral them into ghettos, if you, as it's been purported and said, that you feed them crack and cocaine and marijuana, you flood their communities with those things, then you control their school system and you give them some par, subpar school you discriminate against them so that they can't have certain jobs. And you do all these things, which has been documented, well documented. You have to be blind to not see. And after you've done all this, and then you turn around in your face and say, hey, look, the dog that I didn't feed or I messed up is the weaker dog. And look at him. And then you send the police now to go arrest, investigate arrest. You go to so many of these black communities you see. You see in the black communities, they put the casinos the marijuana emporium, the alcohol, the Chinese food, the bodegas and the type of stuff, no supermarkets. Now they're trying to put supermarkets in those communities. And you go in there, you see the people obese. Uh, they're ignorant a lot of times because the, the schools are terrible, mismanaged by those who control them, and so forth. What type of result do you think will happen? The result is going to be shown. If you ever, as I say, if you have 10 police and you say, well, eight of them go in the black community, of course, you can have more arrests because you have more interaction. You're going to have more fights because you're going to feel, uh, you know, like you're just being, um, you know, targeted, maligned. And after a while, you're like, don't talk to me like that. I know you're the police and you're the, you know, because I think this is where the problem where they say, well, if the police give you a command, you must follow it. Yeah, but if I'm in certain neighborhoods, I keep running into the police and they keep harassing me. After a while, it's not policing, it's harassment. And, you know, the police are going to rough me up all the time. I might retire it and start punching them knowing that I'm going to get a bullet. So what? I die, at least I die punching. And this is many times the attitude that's taken. And somebody will say, oh, no, they're animals. No, they're not. They're human beings and they're sinners just like everybody. So I believe now because the unfair treatment that what it is, the Lord, now, I believe, has allowed this to go on because what you precipitate a problem, but the problem becomes your problem. And now we're seeing the same problem that was said, but with all this time be saying that the sinners, the only sinners in America are these people. Now we're finding that, look, 
things have gotten so bad across the board that we're seen as everybody's a sinner because the Bible says everybody before the cross and before the Ten Commandments stand as sinners. And the only hope we have is to turn to Jesus Christ. Because that's what the cross represents, that you have no excuse and you need to repent. If you don't repent, Christ himself is going to deal with you. So when you look at what's happening, mm -hmm. we see that with all this stuff happening, you see that it's silencing the mouth of people that have been unfair in their judgment and have been wrongfully saying all this time and putting forward this idea that, oh, no, look, at, look, most of the sin done in America is done by this one group of people. But now the evidence is, is things are so bad that the evidence is so clear that we are all sinners and we are all in need of grace. And everybody stand as equal before the foot of the cross. Might not be before the judges like Roy Moore, who was basically um, predatory, stalking these little children, but got away with it. But while he was talking to these kids, he was putting away people. And then you say, who was he putting away? Black people. That's who he was putting away, because that's who you're tough on crime with in America. But yet, he got away with his crimes. And I'm guaranteed all the other people that came before him, like I was reading an article, and they were saying people who came before him for sexual crimes, it was very lenient on. Of course, it's going to be lenient on them. Because he's a predator. If you look at that type of behavior, that's a, like a, a lion or a tiger hunting. But he wasn't hunting for grown women. He had a lot of them around him. He was hunting for little kids. And he was going after little kids in high school and in the mall. And the police had to block him from the mall. That's enough evidence to me. That tell, telling. But yet if you listen to Roy Moore, he says, Oh, he's been on attack. And it's a plan from the devil. No, I think it's a plan from God to expose. That he don't go to his grave with his gray hair in peace. It's all Lord do often. Because whatever is done in darkness shall come to light. And just like how they would spend all the time investigating people and locking up people, so it is that it's proven now that if somebody go investigate him, they'll find dirt on him and it will show that, you know, a lot of these people were being locked up in prison. It wasn't so much that they were more sinners than anybody else. It was that more people were being investigated. Again, how you are in a country where it has been stated clearly by CDC that whites use drugs two and a half times more than blacks. But yet, um, it's a flip when it comes on to arrests. Even more, it's even more disproportionate. The people who are selling the drugs and using the drugs more are not being investigated, not being locked up. But yet, Roy Moore will tell you, I'm a hero, I'm tough on crime. But God is not sleeping. And so to me, what I'm seeing here, people might say, oh, no, it's the Jesuits. Or, no, it's some secret plan. I don't see none of that here. All I see what's happening here is a constant exposure to lie because whatever is done in darkness shall come to light. If you keep telling a lie and keep saying, oh, you know, these people are more immoral than us. No, we are sinners. Nobody's better than the other person. It might be different people groups, but we're all sinners. It will come out. And what you see now, and as I say, if you don't, you're not sure, go online, go onto YouTube, go into the comment sections, especially in conspiracy theory videos, and be ready to be shocked how so many young men believe the most stupid, crazy ideas that you can find out there. If a hurricane blows, it's a plan by the government. It's just some crazy, nutty stuff. Nothing. People can't sin anymore. Everything is a plan. Nothing happens where people just sin anymore or disasters happen or people mess up and poison people by contaminating their food. Everything is a plan. Uh, we have a whole generation of young men who are coming up who believe this. And not only do they believe this, they believe this and they believe it as a religion and they're ungodly. They don't believe in Bible or anything like that because they, they're sensible and they're going to find the truth. And you listen to them, you're thinking, no, all you find is the devil. The devil is making a fool of you. So as we look at these things, we look at what's going on with Roy Moore and we look at what's going on with all these district attorneys who, as the Innocent Project, keep overturning the, these cases. These cases, primarily as they overturn them, what is showing in these cases that 
in these cases, there was evidence enough to clear the person that was innocent. The prosecutor knew it. The district attorney knew it. The police knew it. And they did nothing. And they watched an innocent man railroad off to prison. Now, it would be one thing if they didn't know the information. But when it was shown that it was known by them, they knew what was going on and they didn't do anything to free the innocent. And they watched a man rat in prison. It testified that human beings are corrupt and that none of us are better than the other person and that we're all in need of grace. We're all in need of the saving grace because without Christ, we're a sinner just like the other person that we're thinking we're better than. And all what's happening now with the drug epidemic, if, if I tell you probably 20, I'll give you an example. Now. If I tell you 20 years ago that according to the government, Whites use drugs two and a half times more than blacks, or 2.1 or 2. Point something. You would say to me, you're crazy. There's no way. You would say, look at the media. Look, look at what's going on. All the reports about drugs is in the black community. What are you talking about? But now, you wouldn't say, I'm crazy anymore. You would say, oh yeah, what I'm seeing is true. I can see the evidence in society. Then, you, then I say to you, wait a minute, but who is getting arrested? Because they're telling you on the conservative media that black people love drugs more than anybody else. And I'll tell you that everybody will love drugs and alcohol. This is life. We get addicted to substance. And we all are sinners that we need to take up our cross and follow Jesus and exercise self-control. 20 years ago, you tell me, again, I'm crazy for saying that everybody loves drugs. But the numbers were in because, as I say, the drugs was everywhere. But now the epidemic is so bad that it's just proven the fact that, look, everybody are sinners. We think about whatever the, the, the crime is, across the board, people are sinners. But now the numbers are coming in with all this mass shooting. And all the mass shooting, as I say, they're trying to deny these shootings. They're trying to say it's the government, it's the it's MK Ultra. People are controlling the minds of these people. But when you look at the record, you see that the person was always unstable. It doesn't matter who does the crime. It is mental instability for a person who is Muslim to put a bomb on themselves and walk into a building and blow it up. But same way it's mental instability for a person who is black or white to take a gun and go into a school and shoot kids. It is mental instability all the ways people have fed themselves too much evil, one too much movies, one too much video games, one too much conspiracy theory, watch one too much YouTube video and they're unstable and unreasonable. And if you listen to many people talk and they talk about the things that are going on in the society, the only one conclusion you should have or can have, and no matter if they're white, black, Hispanic, Asian, they're mentally unstable. How can, how can you think that every time a person does a crime is because there's a government involved? You don't believe that people do crime anymore? But up until, as I say, about 50 years ago, everything that the Bible said was true. But now, when Christ says, there shall be war, there shall be famine, there shall be rumors of war, there shall be pestilence, there shall be earthquake, all of that is removed by Christians. I know people who are big conspiracy theorists that are even Seventh-day Adventists that will tell you that if there's an earthquake, there's an antennas con controlling it. If there's an outbreak of a disease, oh, there, there's some government plan. But then you say, but doesn't the Bible say that this is going to happen in the last day? And they say, yeah, yeah, but it's the government doing it. The Bible just didn't tell you that the government was going to do it. These people are crazy. And it, the quicker you understand that they're crazy, and the quicker you understand that if you believe what they're saying is true, you're crazy too, then what you need to do is go back into the archive, look at some of what I talk about with mental health, and start taking some herbs, start studying your Bible, start to realize that things happen in this life that are bad, and so just, just start to go back to truth and fact. Put on the video game, put on the movies, and start to study science, study um, anything to do with fact, history, whatever. And the moment you start doing that, then your brain starts to come back to normal. Take some herbs, drink some water, start exercising, start talking to people, start going to a church and interact with normal people, think normal, and get out of this mad mindset that you believe that says that the wind blow is the government controlling the wind. That will lead to craziness. Just think about how crazy that thought is. You'll you be paranoid after a while. 
because you think if you go if you if you know if you go to the supermarket and say you know you 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 something fall off the shelf and drop on the ground you start looking around because you want to see if the government basically is controlling the things on the shelf you will start going crazy and and this is still kin to what these guys on YouTube and stuff like that believe and these people believe them and as I say everything is a conspiracy theory if the tax go up is a conspiracy theory everything is a plan to take them out and I'm telling you sometimes stuff happens you trip and fall the government didn't lower the floor that you trip the floor just you just miss my judge and you trip nowadays nothing can happen with those people think and as I say it's leading to all the mentally ill people that they think is the government doing this and you know they start killing kids like how does that add up you believe the government is trying to take over the country and then you go and kill kids that's crazy you, you your mind is unstable and that's why i say i believe so start finding some human beings to talk to leave the people online alone start find a church start studying your bible again read history read science read concrete information i'm gonna tell you it'll stabilize the mind and my will start going so berserk study matthew mark luke john start reading those books I'm going to tell you, the Spirit of God will come into you and it'll stabilize your mind and this type of foolishness you were thinking and then you will start to believe that. So it's crazy people literally going to these schools and churches and shooting them up and it don't matter if they're black, white, Asian, whatever. It's just crazy people. That's just how I see it. I don't see it as no government, nothing. It's just a lot of mad people. And when you deal with them, you will realize, yeah, they're capable of doing that. All right. And that's it. So let us pray um, and, and we close there. Sorry for the technical difficulties I have there. earlier. It, the sound, the, my sound disappeared on me. Our oh, Father, Lord in heaven, thank you again for your love. Thank you for your blessing. I pray, dear Lord, that as I try to communicate this, that you may bless the minds of those who listen, just in case I did not say something the best way. I pray that you may be with these words, dear Lord, that truly we know that you bring stability. You bring mental stability. You bring stability in life, stability in mood, in emotions. I pray, dear Lord, for each and every person here that they really put down the madness that you find out there, put down the things out of Hollywood, put down the crazy music, and dear Lord, turn to the rock, which is Christ Jesus, and be established and found upon that rock. I pray for their stability for my stability and the Lord pray for all these people who are suffering because so many mentally deranged people in our society killing their own fellow human beings. Be with us, we pray, as we go through the rest of this day. Protect us. May your angel go with us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being with me here on Revive Reform Radio. Looking forward to talking to you tomorrow morning where we should talk about wisdom for living. Until then, I pray that you may continue to walk with the King. Mm -hmm.